Okay, loud and clear, everyone. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead with the call, guys. Um, at any point in time, if you have any questions, um, just feel free to pop me a message. Uh, I'll try to answer as many questions as I can at the end of the call. Uh, but meanwhile, let me just go through the presentation, uh, and uh, we will have some more uh, time to discuss a bit later on the call. So uh, thank you for having uh, us for the call today. Um, we wanted to have a mini get-together session, <laughs> although it is a, a virtual online session. Um, I hope I could, we could be together and uh, we could get to network again uh, once again in the near future. Um, so the objective of this call is to have an introduction of Noah Prime. Uh, we are a FCA regulated UK brokerage and um, uh, we want to share with you uh, about our company and uh, what is the, the reason why you would want to trade with a UK regulated broker. Uh, and later we will want to share with you uh, about the sign up process and also the IB or the introducing broker area which is pretty much what most of you might be interested in. Um, so any point in time if you have any questions or doubts just pop me a question uh, and I will uh, try to answer that as soon as I can once I'm done with my presentation. Okay, so uh, we are no point. Uh, I have to do this being a uh, uh, FX broker, it's always our duty to have a disclaimer done um, and it's always part of our presentation that you all have already seen this many times so I'll just skip through this. So our agenda for today is going to talk about the company introduction, uh, the financial governance which is very very important. Um, as most of you know, uh, safety of your funds is key and that's one of the key things that we are very focused on um, being a UK FA regulated broker. A bit about business model and then finally we'll come over to um, the technology or sharing the uh, online sign up area and um, the technological parts that we have. Okay, so the company's name is Finatech Trading UK Limited. Uh, it's incorporated in London, United Kingdom. Um, the FCA license is, the FCA oversees uh, all financial transactions and uh, financial institutions under uh, Great Britain. United Kingdom. So our license number is there um, and all this is available online so please feel free to um, look us up. So our primary business is actually a, a prime broker uh, which actually means that we offer liquidity of liquidity providers um, to various other brokers. So what this means is that uh, imagine uh, you are imagine a broker, a broker would deal with a liquidity provider. So a liquidity provider is someone like Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, Citibank, uh, BNP Paribas, or whatever have you, who is either a higher level, uh, larger volume based broker, a financial institution like a hedge fund uh, or a bank. So these are the guys who actually clear the orders. Now this is an LP. These, these guys actually serve clearance services uh, to a broker. A prime broker means that they actually are a LP to a LP. Okay, so uh, let me let me show you what that means. It means that we offer liquidity to the various liquidity providers. So we aggregate flow. Uh, we bring in clearance services from many different uh, LPs around the world, and uh, we we offer a central clearance solution for brokers. So Noah Prime um, is a subsidiary uh, of this facility. So we take care of uh, the retail customers um, and also fund managers and high net worth uh, individuals who will be uh, trading via the Noah Prime platform. And then of course there is the corporate institutional business which we are purely a prime broker. And uh, the company has been around since 2007 so it's good at 10 years now um, and uh, it's a member of uh, the financial ombudsman service and it's covered by FSCS. Now the FSCS is very, very uh, important guys um, and I'm sure that you have already heard about it but let me just um, repeat that one more time. The FSCS is a compensation scheme which is devised by uh, the UK government under the FCA regulation. So it goes to uh, protect all deposits under a certain en entity, be it a person, a company or a trust account, whatever it is. Um, the, 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 the assets under this particular entity are protected up to a 75,000 uh, pounds per entity, right? So uh, whatever amounts you have up to 75,000 pounds is covered for by FCA using taxpayers money. 
So what does this mean? In, in, in the case that Noah Prime or Phenotech for that matter um, goes insolvent, which means we have debt which is more than what we can, uh, which is more than our assets and we cannot pay our debt anymore, the company winds up, right? The company gets liquidated. Okay, touch wood. <laughs> the company gets liquidated. In this case, uh, if we cannot pay uh, the assets of clients, which basically is your deposits, the government, the UK government, steps in to actually uh, give you back the assets that you have lost up to 75,000 pounds per entity and um, for some of you you're very well aware uh, for some of you I just want to share with you that this is the only jurisdiction in the world and I mean in the whole world this is the only jurisdiction this is the only license which actually offers uh, fund safety funds insurance if you can say so um, using government funds, using taxpayer funds. So this is not a third-party insurance. It is not someone like Aon or uh, 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 AIA insurance coming in, ING insurance coming in to actually cover your funds. It's not a third-party insurance company. It is the UK government themselves um, underwriting the safety of your funds. So you can see how powerful and how secure that is, uh, which is why we're very proud of carrying this um, uh, license. And uh, this, this fund safety extends to you also. Um, and I'm sure you've been exposed to many other brokers. Um, you've been exposed to many other uh, financial institutions from different, different countries. So please ask them this if you can. And that is, how safe is your funds uh, when you park it with them? And uh, despite all the uh, nitty gritty and all the bells and whistles that they can give you, uh, the ultimate safety, the ultimate comfort factor for you should be where and how your funds are kept. And uh, as long as that is safe, everything else is secondary, right? So I just want to share that with you. And again, please feel free to shoot me questions um, if I, on this and I'll be glad to answer them. So this is a copy of our license. Um, again, it's all available online. Um, so please uh, feel free to check us out. Uh, so uh, just I was, as I was sharing a bit with you about the safety of the funds, um, this is just a reiteration of it. So typically what happens is the funds are kept uh, uh, by a company in a, in a corporate bank account. Uh, this is how it was back in the 80s and the 90s. Um, so it was, it, was, it was purely a, 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 a deposit taking uh, facility which is handled single-handedly by the firm. And back then, to be honest, um, in the 80s and 90s, it is a privilege <laughs> to be associated with a uh, Wall Street firm or a brokerage. Um, uh, right now, it's, it's, it's much more common and um, you would definitely need to do more due diligence uh, in the firms that you deal with, uh, especially when it's, it involves taking custody of your funds. So uh, in the later part of uh, the century, early 2000s and so on, um, they have segregated accounts, which basically means that the company keeps funds uh, separately in two different accounts. Uh, so the company's uh, expenses, the payroll, uh, whatever have you, have, has goes into a company account. And then you've got a client deposit account, which is basically a segregated account model. So what this means, uh, it basically means that your funds are kept differently from the company's funds. So does, the, uh, does that mean that the funds are safe? Does that mean the funds are kept uh, uh, at a... At a, at a different level of financial security? No. Unfortunately, this is something that is used um, uh, very commonly by financial institutions to show that they have better accounting controls, but overall fund safety, overall fiduciary controls and authority goes back to the company. So anything is still possible. So like I say, um, we have a way of putting the funds here um, in HSBC, HSBC UK, as you know, is a top tier uh, prime bank, and um, it's 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 uh, it's, it's triple A rated, um, uh, and uh, it's one of the safest banks in the world. Um, so what happens is all your funds, all the custody of your funds, is kept at HSBC. Now here's something which is very interesting. Um, I don't have a slide to explain that to you, but I just want to share that with you while I'm here. Uh, if you if you if you look at, uh, I mean. Uh, we have been in the financial markets for close to the uh, last 20 years now um, and uh, we've seen many companies uh, come and go, right? And one of the biggest challenges, even if the company is uh, solvent and even if the company um, has, has a, a, a strong financial record, there is 
little depth or there's little clarity as to how the funds are kept um, with the various uh, debtors, which in case you are the clients, you are, uh, we are, we are your debtor. So we have funds of you, which belong to you. So that's our debt, right? And we owe you that. Now, what happens here is when you open an account with us, um, you automatically have a separate ledger, which means a record under HSBC. So in the eyes of traditional segregated accounts, um, we have Noah Prime or Finotech have a client deposit account. And let's say, for example, all our funds accumulated are $250 million. Now, there is no way that HSBC or FCA or anyone knows how much fund belongs to you because all these records are kept by the company. So uh, Mr. X uh, has put in $1,000, Mr. Y has put in $100, whatever that might be, whatever funds is kept in the custody account has no records of who the funds belong to in case, in case the company goes into liquidation. So assuming um, Ernst and Young or KPMG or the regulator comes in and says, hey guys, look, we have, we have, uh, we have taken over custody of the company. Um, the company has gone into liquidation. We have 200 million of funds. Um, uh, right now we're going to investigate who is owed what and we're going to pay them back, all back. Okay? So this is typically what happens. The company is the only one that keeps the records of who is owed what. Right? And there's no central authority, there's no central ledger as to show uh, what, what clients have put in. Here, under the FCA model, is very different, and which is why um, you have to pay very close attention to it. Uh, all the funds that is kept under HSBC is kept under an individual ledger. What that means is that me, Sini, um, Mr. Panir, Mr. Partiban, anyone who has a deposit with Noah Prime, anyone who puts in money with Finotech, your name, is explicitly known saying that Mr. So-and-so has put in X amount of funds, right? And this amount is kept on record with HSBC itself. So what this means is in the event that the company goes insolvent, in the event the company goes into liquidation, your funds are kept separately HSBC and the bank knows completely what is kept and who deposited what. Right? This is called a CASS 7 category uh, classification under your fund safety. And I know I'm a bit technical in this, but please pardon me. But it's very important so that you understand how safe and how sound uh, the, the practice is to keep your funds safe with us. And that's very important for us. So that's really what this um, segregation of accounts and this CASS 7 segregation level means for all clients' funds under Noah Prime, under FCA. So it's, 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 it's really, to be honest, it's really like opening a bank account. <laughs> if you ask me, the process is really like opening a bank account, and which is probably why we are so strict. Um, we need a, 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 a copious amounts of documents, we need this and that and so on, and uh, sometimes it might be very tiring and it might be very frustrating for you, we understand, but please understand that this is necessary so that we protect um, your long-term interest and this is only a one-time process as soon as you're done with the account opening um, no matter how challenging it might be you just want to go through that for once so that you have a peace of mind throughout the rest of your trading career I mean let's be honest guys it's already challenging trading in the market alone <laughs> it's already challenging being profitable in the market alone and now you don't want to be challenged or you want to have don't want to have other headaches of being with a, a, a broker who doesn't um, pay you, uh, being with a broker who goes out of business and then you lost with your funds stuck. So this is very, very important um, and we've taken painful amount of detail and effort to make sure that your funds are safe using this way of governance. Um, and this is really something we're very proud of uh, and we're very happy to extend this to you. So uh, take advantage of it, take you, make use of it. So all of the records that is kept at HSBC and uh, FCA will tally with the amount of deposits you have put in. Um, so the next question you will have is, what happens to losses? What happens to profits? All of your trading account um, losses and profits are synchronized with um, the central records, are synchronized with FCA records every 24 hours, guys. Every single day, our server balance 
our LP balance and our bank balance are all tallied and reported back to FCA. Uh, even a single shortfall, even a, uh, a discrepancy of say ten dollars or what, will impose will, will cause us a, a fine. Uh, we'll be we'll be imposed a fine for not uh, keeping our books clean. So that's how strict the process is. Um, and um, those who those um, uh, who have actually known us, we know that we have uh, had um, very, very, very long career in this business, uh, and we've seen many different companies. We've seen many different licenses from different different jurisdictions, and we're very proud um, to be working with you guys. We're very excited to be working with you guys to bring in such a top-notch uh, regulatory facility for the retail traders for you, so that you know you could actually be uh, taking advantage of this. So I just want to um, stress on that really well so they understand. So uh, whatever challenge you have with account opening, I'm sure those are teething problems, initial starting problems that you might have. But once that is overcome, and once we're done with that, down the road, I think it'll be very smooth and you'll have absolute peace of mind uh, trading with us. So with that, I just want to jump in a few more slides about our business model. Um, typically, those of you who have been in the business, I'm sure you're aware that there's many different business models that um, are used. Uh, the market makers who are basically sitting at the other side of your order. Um, their interest is for you to lose money so that they can actually make money from your losing order. Uh, and that's a typical market maker or a dealing desk. Uh, and then they have a, there's a straight through processing model which basically means that uh, whatever order comes to us we just clear it via uh, another LP. And then there's a hybrid model where you can see in the graph some of the losing trades are kept within the company the winning trades are passed on um, to the LPs and the clearance desks. So that's a hybrid model. Um, Noah Prime is 100% STP um, and uh, we don't do a dealing desk at all. In fact, we cannot do a dealing desk. Uh, that's how our license is set up. So um, you are assured that 100% um, your, your order goes to the market. Now, <laughs> at this point, I know that some of you are very experienced and who have been around the market long enough um, you would you would say, hey, you know what? Uh, everybody says that they're, they're STP. <laughs> everybody says that they don't have a dealing desk. Uh, how do you know? All right? How how do you know for sure? Now again, uh, here is where we take lots of uh, pride in how transparent we are. Every single order that you uh, would actually punch in through your MT4 would actually fall to our back end clearance engine. And every single order, no matter how small or how big it is, has a counterparty LP that we clear under. So uh, imagine this, you're, you're putting in a one lot order in your MT4. The moment you click buy, we will see a long uh, 10,000, uh, 100,000 contracts, um, Euro dollar for example, and it's cleared by JP Morgan. It's cleared by Citibank. So we have the exact transactional records for every single order that is being cleared by which LP or which bank that is. So again, all this is for auditing purposes. All this is for our own reconciliation at the end of the day because we have to provide this to FCA. <laughs> and uh, it's something that we can also uh, take pride in because we know that this is 100% clear by the moral and by all means we're happy to share this with you. Um, again, no matter how big or how small your order is, every order is goes out straight to the market and is cleared by and another LP. So uh, here is our, our, our technology setup. Um, we have uh, our primary facilities in London, Equinix LD4, uh, that's how the data center is called. Uh, our backup facilities in New York, uh, NY4. Uh, again, Equinix data center is used because that's where um, the, the, the best uh, uh, LPs and uh, the funds are. So we want to have absolutely no latency or minimal latency, uh, which latency basically means um, the time required for your order to be cleared. So let's say if you're a scalper or a news trader or a high frequency trader, we can clear your orders in the fastest amount of time. So on average, 95% of our orders are cleared in less than 12 milliseconds, uh, which is one thousandth of a second. So uh, in less than 12 of one thousandth of a second, uh, all our ninety-five percent of our orders are clear. So that's how efficient we are. And again, we we, we just want to improve this all the way as we go by. So it's very simple. Um, here is what we do: uh, you come into us, we aggregate all your flow, and we clear it through the various LPs that we have. 
um, typically all the big boys uh, that you can think of. We currently have about 16 uh, different uh, liquidity providers. And uh, again, this will be added, this will be dropped, it will reduce, it will increase as it goes by. So that, that, that's typically um, the, 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 the flow. We will assess the, the performance of each LP over time. And uh, depending on how well or how poorly they do, uh, we will increase or we will drop them uh, and we'll increase the flow to them or drop the flow to them. And that's purely managed by us. Okay, I've got an account sign up process that I want to do. Um, and uh, if you feel that um, there's something you're already familiar with, let me know. Otherwise, I'll just run you through this. So here we have our brokerage uh, website uh, and uh, quite easily uh, if you're going to open an IB account, you use, if you're going to open an IB account or a money manager account, you use the open partner account link. Um, if you're going to open a, a, a trading account for yourself, um, choose the open life account link. And once you've opened up, um, you will get these options. Uh, if it's an if it's a account just for yourself, you would choose individual. If it's an account that you're going to be sharing with your wife or your spouse or your trading partner, um, you would choose joint account. Um, and lastly, it's a, a corporate account. If you have a if you have a company account that you want to trade under, uh, if you have a trust, if you have a foundation account that you want to use, um, that's where you choose corporate. So, uh, for example, sake, let's just choose something simple. We go to individual accounts. We hit on next. Again, this process might take about um, 10 to 15 minutes um, of the sign up. Um, and again, uh, I just want to familiarize you through with the process so that at least you know that this is what you'll be looking for and what you can answer when you sign up. And um, it's 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 a, it's a it's a process that is going to be uh, it's going to be easy for you to do, but it just takes a bit of time because you've got to print lots of details. Okay, so I'm just going to put in some um, dummy details here. Okay, um, so those which are have the asterisks, as you can see, uh, those are compulsory fields. Okay, um, so every uh, email account that you have um, is unique for each sign up. Um, so I ran out of uh, email accounts, so I had to sign up a new uh, email account just for this call. Uh, it is test sign up at gmail.com. So um, there's only one, uh, the email address is a unique identifier. So every account that you sign up must have a unique email address. Okay, so you also confirm your email address. Um, so you, you can put in any uh, one of these three values. So it's usually um, your mobile number. All right, and then we go to the next page. So as you can see here, the sign-up process is split easily for you to recognize into four different uh, steps. Here is the details of you, and then um, next you'll put in more details of yourself, and then finally you review, and then you submit. Okay. So we proceed to the next section. Okay. And here is where your details are actually uh, taken over from the first sign-up form, as you can see. So you don't have to fill this up. Here you have to put in your employment status, whether you are employed, self-employed, unemployed, retired, or student, occupation, okay, and your IC number. So this is your identification number. Okay. And uh, notice that under here, here you guys will notice each, these these forms. Um, they are they are. Uh, have been heavily customized. Uh, they have been integrated to many different um, solutions uh, to give you a much more uh, robust user experience. First of example, if I if I choose Singapore here, which is basically, if you notice, I never keyed in Singapore earlier, right? It, it, it detects my IP address, and then, or using cookies, it detects where I'm coming from, and then it fills in Singapore for me. So if you look at the way the address is actually structured, it's based on how a Singaporean address would look like. So, for example, let me change to China. 
and then you see that you notice that this has changed right you see the street number the suburb province and all that which was not there earlier for Singapore um, let's try uh, United Kingdom so again you see it's changed again um, you see the county you see the county which is very unique um, to UK uh, address structures only so all of this has been changed so that you'll have very specific um, address details to, for you to put in so I'm just gonna fill in some quick mumbo jumbo here okay uh, this is compulsory so we have to put it in postal code okay so again the phone number is taken from the previous page and all that is there the fax number is not necessary um, and the email address has been given from the so here you have to identify are you a politically exposed person um, so basically a politically exposed person means you are either a someone who's interested someone who's involved in a ruling party um, or has heavy uh, media exposure or if you are a family member of them right so most of us don't apply to this uh, area but the moment you choose yes um, your sign up will be flagged for compliance <laughs> you're gonna go through lots and lots more screening so um, choose no which is which is what uh, will be applicable to you um, and then next right so here you nominate your bank account so a, a bank account is where you will be sending funds from right some of you might be funding through credit card some of you might be funding through uh, a bank account so uh, that's flexible you can change that later uh, but if you're very sure you want to put in a bank account now you can choose yes and you can fill in your bank account details or if you say no um, just gonna worry about that later just press no and then uh, it takes you on to the next page okay now here is where um, the financial uh, awareness the financial know-how of you is actually checked so this is probably um, one of the most um, challenging areas of the sign up but it's necessary so that under the FCA uh, we see you as a sign up who actually knows as, as a client who actually knows what you are doing um, and not someone who is just uh, uh, signing up for fun and uh, have taking risk in the market which is not advisable for um, so again all this is meant to uh, make sure that you know what you're doing and it's a way of protecting you um, in your uh, uh, financial awareness and risk tolerance trading in a very volatile market which is the FX market so I acknowledge that I have the necessary expertise experience and knowledge of the market in light of the nature of transactions or services envisaged and that I am capable of making my own investment decisions and understanding the risks involved yes I acknowledge that I have at least one year of experience or that I have out transactions significant size in the relevant markets yes we acknowledge that the size of our financial insurance portfolio defined as including cash deposits and financial instruments exceeds five hundred thousand. You can put here no. If it does, ex if it does ex exceed five hundred thousand, please put it as yes. Okay. So what this means is that um, if you have your uh, investment assets, if you have your financial portfolio more than five hundred thousand euros, okay, um, you will not qualify uh, as a retail client anymore you will qualify as a professional client right um, and what this means is that under a professional client status you will no longer be insured under the uh, FSCS scheme right remember the compensation scheme I was telling you guys about where you're protected up to 75,000 um, pounds for professional clients it doesn't apply so for it's, it's a scheme purely meant for retail clients protection um, so uh, it's necessary you put here no so that um, you are qualified to be a client and you enjoy um, the, the fund safety. Please select the currency, US dollars. Okay. Uh, estimated annual income and liquid net worth asset. Okay. Here is where they are doing financial uh, prudence of you. Um, they want to know what's your background and how much you actually have. So uh, a, a typical way to answer this is uh, whatever you declare in your annual income right have that as declared as your whatever that you're earning uh, every year so for example you're earning about uh, 100,000 to 250,000 pounds a year um, that's your annual income and your liquid net worth asset right um, it's, it doesn't include your house okay so liquid net worth asset 
assets which are easily convertible to cash, it's your liquid assets, have that lesser than this amount, right? So if it's 100,000 to 50,000, have it lesser. So 50,000 to 100,000. And, and again, if you have more, no problem, please declare it. It's just that compliance will ask you more questions, but you know, um, it's a good way of uh, screening your application through. Okay, so um, just put in other assets, um, 10,000, available risk trading capital, 10,000, anticipated initial deposit, uh, 1,000. Okay, so that's typically what you can answer. And again, this will vary from individual to individual. So please put in what's accurate for you. Your investment objective, uh, again, this is, there's, there's, no, there's no right or wrong here. Just choose whatever that you're uh, looking to do. Um, some may choose capital growth, some may choose speculation, and that's it. Source of funds, employment, whichever that might be for you. Have you held a trading account with us? No. Have you been a registered entity with these regulatories? No. Are you required to be registered with a regulator? No. Are you an employee of an exchange? No. Have you been declared bankruptcy? No. Have you ever been employed in the financial sector? No. So quite easily all of these questions are no, as you can see, under the other information. Right? So here, um, this is where you put in your password. Your password is necessary for your uh, client area or your, your, your back office dashboard, as you would say. Um, so let's say I put in my password here. Let's see. Okay, so anytime you're not, anytime you put in a bad password which doesn't fulfill um, the requirements, you will be given a exclamation mark, right? And you can just mouse over, you can see, ah, okay, my password should be between 8 and 12 characters, at least one uppercase, at least one number, and at least one special character. So let me change that again. I need numbers, I need one uppercase. Um, I need one special character. It has to be at least eight to eight job digits. So I've changed that, right? Okay. So here is uh, one more uh, area that you have to uh, just put in an answer um, to show that you are financially aware. You know that you know that what you're doing in the market. Um, and this is basically simple FX transactions, which I'm sure that you guys are more than able to handle. Uh, so you have an equity of a thousand dollars in your account. Your account leverage is 1 is to 100, which basically means 1 is to 1, right? Using all your account equity, what is the maximum you can trade in dollar yen, right? So at $1,000, um, at a 1 to, le 1 to 100 leverage, you will get $100,000 worth of margin. So that basically means it's one standard contract, which is $100,000. So pretty straightforward there. Um, you buy one standard lot of euro dollars at 1.10505, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 digits. You sell back at 1.10500, right? So that's 0 0.5 pip difference. So you bought and you sold 0 0.5 pips lower, which is actually a loss, right? So one standard lot is $10, 0 0.5 pips, that's $5 that you've lost. So that's where you put in the next answer. You buy $200,000 uh, of Euro dollar or, and you sell 100,000 Euro dollar. So you, you're buying 200,000 contracts and you're selling 100,000 contracts, you're shorting 100,000 contracts. So overall, you are still long 100,000 Euro, 100,000 contracts on Euro dollar. So you're long 100,000 on Euro dollar. Okay, that's it. <laughs> that's where the test finishes. And then um, here you just uh, give in um, details about your trading experience. Um, where do you gain your experience? Um, how many trades a month? Again, you can be as accurate as you want to be, um, but we basically want to see that you are aware of what you're doing in the financial markets, especially in the FX market. Here is where you put in your experience with shares, bonds, and funds. And again, if we don't have experience in that, so it's not applicable. Um, zero zero features cfds and that experience no i've got no experience in that no zero 
and zero. Okay. Lastly, we have uh, options experience no, and uh, this is not acceptable, not applicable. Zero and zero. So here, basically, you're just giving um, information about what you know about your other financial instruments. Um, so that's it. And then, what kind of man, what kind of trader you are? Next. Okay. So that's it. You're done. Um, firstly, it was your personal details. Secondly, it was uh, your financial um, uh, knowledge and awareness. And then you go through the application just one more time. Just run through as it is. Okay. Just go through your details. And then eventually, if you're happy with everything, you can click submit. So you can see that uh, my trading experience, uh, the quiz that we actually put in, uh, it's a pass. <laughs> so we already passed through the uh, test and now you are actually a sophisticated uh, trader um, and then you've passed through the test for us to open an account. Okay, so final declaration, um, you accept and all the agreements and all the uh, terms and conditions are here. Again, you agree and now at the bottom part as you see here, here is where it's a unique process where we will send a PIN number to your email address. Um, notice that the, the test sign up 80 at g, uh, 880 at uh, gmail.com, that's the email address I used. And what happens is it will send me a PIN number. You can see here, I've got an I've got a, uh, email from Noah Prime which has a PIN number. And this PIN number and uh, note email is sent to me right when I started the application, not just. You can see it was sent 30 minutes ago. So at any point in time, if my connection gets dropped off or if I want to come back and uh, uh, continue the application later, I can always load back this email. I can just resume your application to the last section completed. Please click here. So for every section by section, we actually store it on our service. Anytime you want, you can always come back um, and you can continue the process. So not to worry, it's like an autosave feature that we have. Now the most important thing here is um, the PIN number. Once the application is put through, you will get a unique PIN number which is only given to your email address. And this is very important guys. Uh, it actually goes to ensure that the email address we have of you is accurate. right? And this PIN number is unique so that only you can access it and only you can punch it in into the application form. Only after this, the sign-up process is complete. Now, there might be cases where uh, people enter their user, uh, the, the email address wrongly, or um, there's case sensitivity to uh, the, the email address they're putting in. Uh, whatever reason, uh, it, the email address is not captured accurately in the system. And this is a good way to actually uh, avoid all those problems. And we filter this out right from the start. So if you don't get your emails, or if you don't get a notification from us, it's a good uh, way to check uh, whether you've put in the right email address with us and you can always call us you can always check with us uh, as to how your application status is and only when you've got your pin number take this four digits down 3862 um, you get back in onto the application form you put in those four digits 3862 and then it's done only then the sign up process is complete so as you can see um, this is as similar as to opening a bank account um, and that's the way the process is because it is necessary because your details are now available at FCA, your details are now available at HSBC and uh, that's the level of uh, regulation and uh, screening that we have. So what happens here is um, you see this, uh, what, uh, once my actual name and my passport details and, and uh, national ID is given, automatically the system does an electronic verification which means it checks with all the databases in the world um, and uh, if you already have a digital uh, uh, record in our database, you will be approved automatically. Uh, unfortunately, certain countries are of high risk and unfortunately, Malaysia is uh, of a high risk category right now. So we need a bit more of documents um, from, um, your guide, from your account opening process so that we could run it by compliance and have you approved. Um, otherwise, uh, if, if, if it's a normal account sign up, we can straight away match your details online um, and we can, we, can, we can approve your account within one business day. So please help us um, in giving us the uh, exact documents that we need 
um, for your ID proof, we need your passport. Um, and uh, for your address proof, we need a utility bill. Okay, the utility bill which has a home address, um, not your office address, and a bank statement. Okay, so either or. And the ID proof would be your passport. Um, so send it to our staffs. Our staffs are available um, 24 by 7. Um, they, are, they, are, they will go through your documents. Um, they, will, they will screen it through before they put it to compliance. And usually if the documents are submitted uh, in order, within 24 hours, within one business day, uh, your account is approved. And then you can proceed to fund it using bank wire or credit card. Um, and using HSBC, it takes one to two business days. Uh, credit card is instant. Um, you get your account funded immediately. Um, and uh, your registry trade stay away. So um, that is the account opening process. Um, all of this uh, will actually be available online as well. So as you can see here, um, your NOAA Prime account needs your attention, which is basically asking you for your uh, ID proof and your documents. And this is a proof of the account opening. So your entire account opening process has been done and you'll be given a application form, which is a copy saying that you've completed the sign-up process successfully. So this is a process, guys. I um, just want to run that with you. So at least now you understand um, this is what needs to be done for each and one of your signups. I strongly recommend um, that as initial uh, leaders, as early movers with us, uh, if you would be able to train and you're able to uh, have a strong level of leadership uh, for, your, for your clients coming in, it will be a much more easier process if we handhold them and once you've done it for the first time, you just do it well and you do it once and then that's it. Uh, for the rest of the trading career with us, there will be no other further complications and it will be a smooth sailing process then. Only for the account opening and the initial onboarding process, we agree it is a bit tough but as you can see, the benefits are plenty uh, and it's meant for a long term uh, working relationship for us together. Okay, perfect. Okay. So uh, here is a here is a typical uh, client area dashboard you would see. Um, the system will be sending we and the system will be sending you messages and notifications here. Um, you can change um, your language. Right now we have English. We'll be adding Chinese and uh, Malay um, in, in next uh, few versions. Um, your name and logout function is here. Um, so you see your account balances and your account activities here. So if you have more than one MT4 account, you'll be shown a list of accounts here. Right? Uh, this is the activity of you, right? Whatever account transactions, whatever fund transfer deals have happened, all of them will be logged here. So in case you see any suspicious activity, uh, please uh, give us a ring right away. Um, this is meant for you to verify your uh, activity. Um, this is your account gain. Um, this is your account loss, drawdown, whatever performance you have. This is shown in a snapshot here. Market hours, uh, what are the markets open? What time are they closing? You can uh, also launch in a report of your own account, um, summary report of how much volume you've done, uh, deposit of withdrawal or your account statement of your own account all within here. So right down over here, you can see the, uh, it's like Forex Factory where you see the news releases coming up. Um, and you can just uh, 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 have this as part of your calendar. Okay, so uh, here is your dashboard quite typically. So here's your landing account. Okay, so we have, we've got a unique concept of a landing account. Um, a landing account is where your funds will always be uh, once they've been funded. So you can choose to keep all your uh, funds in your trading account or you can keep some in your landing account, some in your trading account for whatever reason. Okay, Mr. Kumar asked how to create trading account and funding account. So once your once your uh, lending account has has a uh, has a deposit, we will actually uh, create um, the uh, trading accounts uh, and we will fund the account in for you. At any point in time, you can choose to transfer the funds as way you want. So here you can see um, that you can create a new lending account. So just now, uh, Mr. Pani was asking, can I choose to have my um, my uh, lending account or my MT4 account in a different currency, yes. So here you can choose to have Euro, Pound, uh, Chinese, Yuan even, um, and you can create a lending account for that. So you can choose to convert your funds internally from US dollar to Euro or Pound, or you can just create a new MT4 account altogether under this lending account, then trade under that particular um, currency. 
So it's really your choice, and all this is done on the fly. Um, you don't have to get any approval or any 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 verification from us. Uh, it all happens uh, automated. So here you see uh, the funds, uh, and uh, you can um, uh, look at the number of accounts that you have. And again, this is in your account. Um, how much you can do an account statement. So you don't even have to log into your MT4 account. You can do it all from the web. You can pull out a statement of your account. You can pull out a deposit withdrawal statement of your account, or you can just issue a summary report of your account. Right? Um, you can change the password of your MT4 via here. So let's say you forgot um, your MT4 account password. Um, you don't have to write into us at all. You just have to log. In, you just have to log into your client area, this dashboard area. Go over here and change the password. This will change your MT4 password. You can also download the MT4 platform from here. So here, you can choose to transfer funds. So an internal transfer is where uh, from your MT4 account, you can transfer to your landing account or vice versa, right? So that is totally up to you. You can change it as in, as in how you wish. So for example, I can choose to tr change $100 okay, from um, my uh, trading account to my landing account. So what this uh, is supposed to do is that it's supposed to change uh, the balance of my MT4 trading account and bring it up to my landing account, which is a non-tradable account. So as you can see, earlier we had $1.10 and I had 371.85 here. So $100 from my MT4 account has been removed and it's been put under the landing account. So now from here, I can choose to uh, withdraw the funds. So my account, so I go back to this again. <clears throat> Transfer funds. So that's what we just did. Um, you can withdraw your funds also. This is how you withdraw your funds. You can put in a withdrawal request um, via this area. Okay, so from account, from the lending account, I've just got $100 in there. And I choose to withdraw to my OCBC bank account. Um, here is where you have to have your bank account actually declared first or you can add a new bank account and then you're punching all the details, right? So let's say I put in um, my bank, right? Source type, this is my bank account. Um, bank name, say Maybank. Account number 12345. Beneficiary name is Sini. Um, say M... B, B, E, M, Y, K, L, whatever, something like that. Um, yeah, so here, this is not necessary. This is for uh, countries that have, or banking systems that have these codes. If it doesn't have, you just leave it blank. Uh, bank address, say, number one, um, whatever, uh, KLCC. Sorry, that's the only address I know. <laughs> KL. Uh, Slang on Malaysia. Okay, uh, KL, Malaysia. Malaysia. Okay, postal code of your bank address. Okay, if you have an intermediary bank, um, you can put it in. If you don't know or you don't have one, just, just leave that blank. And um, that's it. Additional information, uh, please give me my money quickly. So add source. All right, so as you can see, I have succeeded at a new bank. So from here, I can choose to now withdraw to my bank, my bank account or my OCBC account. All right, so I choose that in and then I put in $100. Okay, I put in whatever notes I want. Again, uh, quick. Okay, and then submit. So once I do that, this will now go to compliance. Uh, compliance will take a look at the the, uh, the uh, withdrawal and uh, they'll look through the account details. They pass it to Treasury. Treasury will do the withdrawal themselves, and then it'll be sent out within one business day. So that's how a, a withdrawal process works. Fund account is here. Um, again, it's a, it's it's a pretty similar process. Um, you can declare your bank account if you want, and it'll give you the exact bank details. So, for example, um, I can say may my Maybank account. I want to fund from my Maybank account to my landing account, and I want to put in ten thousand dollars, right? 
So um, this is HSBC, which is where we're sending the funds to. You submit. So what this does is it will send you an email, um, which is, see, the funding instructions have been sent via email to the address associated with your account. Right? So what this means is it will send you an email with uh, the exact funding instructions. So you can print out that instructions. You can bring it to your bank. You can bring it to your bank teller and tell them that, look, I want to send this funds. Um, go ahead and do it. Okay, so that's funding account. Um, that's all of the account. So that's pretty much it. This is where all the funds transfers happen. Um, again, you can do internal transfer between your own MT4 accounts at your own discretion. Um, so, for example, if you have one account losing money uh, and uh, the other account has money, you can choose to transfer one. Uh, uh, you can choose to transfer funds from one MT4 account to the other MT4 account all by yourself. And this happens real time. So you don't have to wait for support. You don't have to send any requests in. It's everything is automated. Um, so that's how we have made this a very uh, a very robust platform. So you can do as much as you want on your own, uh, and you only need to come to us if you have something really really critical. Okay, let me see what else I can show you. Uh, we have the documents here, uh, which is basically your ID documents. Um, the broker forms are here. Uh, or whatever, whatever agreements, whatever um, uh, POA documents, all that will be uploaded here. Your profile is here, um, your own user record, um, so whatever um, that you have put in during the sign-up process, all the details is here, um, and you can change it. You can uh, you can you can change it via compliance approval again. Um, it doesn't happen on your uh, on your uh, back office here. So it's just a way for you to screen your process right now. Okay, um, I think I'm pretty much done. As you can see, it's a very simple, very user-friendly uh, client area, um, and you can do pretty much all the stuff on your own. Um, you technically don't need us, <laughs> only when it comes back to uh, the compliance, the account opening part. After that, you're pretty much on your own, and you can take care of yourself. It's a very independent platform. I had a question. Let me just try to see that. Uh, in my login page, okay, sorry, a few questions here. Mr. Kumar, how many days will it take to transfer? Uh, if it's an internal transfer, uh, MT4 or MT4 or landing account, it's all real time, it's immediate. Uh, if you're doing via a bank account or credit card, please give us one day, to, one business day to process and approve the transaction. Uh, and then credit card, it's applied immediately. Uh, bank account, it takes another one to two days for the funds to reach your bank account. Next question, Mr. Santa Kumar. In my login page, I don't see any fund account icon. Any advice, uh, sir? Possibly your account might not be, have been approved yet. Um, if you can, just drop me an uh, email or a message with your email address, um, and then I'll just check on the status of your account. Only when your account is approved, then you can see um, the funding option. Okay, is it portfolio account or trading account? Okay, uh, Pratib, uh, bro, in, in the profile that you saw just now, you had both accounts. We have a managed account as well as a self-trading account. So it is possible under one client to have multiple accounts. Bro, so this is your, this is your IB area. Uh, it is quite similar to the client area, except that you don't see uh, uh, too much of account-related activities. Here you will see your client dashboard which basically means how many accounts and how many, uh, what kind of activity you have in your network. So this particular IB that we have, uh, he recently had four uh, client accounts approved uh, and all of these status are here. So anytime you see that there's accounts with missing documents, pending verification, uh, denied approval, dormant accounts, you can just click on them and then you can find out more details about which, who this client is and what you can do for them. So, for example, here I approve clients, so I can just go to these guys and, and put, chances are if they're, if they're under my IB network, there's a very high chance that I'll have the contact number. So, I'll just call them up and I'll say, hey, you know, thank you for funding or thank you for opening an account. Um, if there's anything I can do to help you, I'll give you my trading tips. I'll, I'll, I'll do whatever it takes to grow this business together. And so, uh, you can give customized advice for your uh, clients and this dashboard gives you a good overview of what's going on. So client transactions, you will see whatever they've, they've done overall, as in how much they've funded, how much they've uh, deposited, how much they've removed, or what kind of activities going on in the network. All that is shown here. Uh, your trading volume. Um, so here is a trading volume for this particular IB for his network. 
So as a as an IB, you would like to see huge spikes of your uh, clients' uh, trading volume, and hopefully they're increasing every day. So that's that's what really excites you. Um, and um, yeah, this is currency volume. You can also see CFD volume. So market news again, same thing. Forex factory like calendar uh, dashboard. So where you would uh, uh, see your marketing link is go to profile. So you see this link called profile, go to profile. And in here, you will see this uh, section called marketing tools, right? Um, all of these links are actually created for you. Um, so uh, we can create multiple links for you. So example, what you can see here is this particular uh, IB has got two links uh, which are under these links. Now you can you can you can create a, a, a short link. You can create an affiliate page. Um, you can create a third-party, uh, say, uh, ad space landing page. Uh, so if you do internet marketing, um, you can create many many different pages, and we can create many many links for you under these uh, referral links. So whatever happens, um, you can actually track it as to how many signups came through which link um, to give you a better uh, market allocation of your uh, uh, online advertisement of your or of your conversion campaigns. So it, that's that's pretty much it. So here you'll see your links, and typically for all IBs, you'll see one link, which is the link that you can use here. See that? So this is the link you can see. You just copy that, and then you can start sending that to whoever you know, in your WhatsApp or in your email. Uh, just shoot that out. Uh, as soon as someone clicks on that link. Um, uh, this is something you want to listen to as soon as someone clicks on that link even if they don't sign up as soon as someone clicks on the link uh, we know that the sign up comes from you and uh, even if they uh, come back and they sign up a few days later the referral is still given back to your IB link so long as they use the same device um, uh, and um, even if they come back to noaprime.com without your referral link we will still give the sign up back to you because the first visit that they came was using your link and we know it came from your uh, referral so it's a good way of making sure that there's no uh, spillage that every sign up is given back to you and that's a way that's a good way that we could build our business network together uh, if at all they need anything else uh, please feel free uh, to email us uh, my email is uh, sini s double -E -N -I, at noahprime.com um, and uh, the support desk is always there for you guys support at noahprime.com um, so feel free uh, to let us know whatever you might need.